Hey everyone, it's Rich from richermoney.com and today I'm talking to you about three crucial strategies that can more than double your TSP. It'll make you a TSP millionaire. These three important steps are one, picking the right investing strategy. Two, don't time the market. Three, contribute the max to the TSP as early as you can in your career. This is crucial. The first strategy is to pick the right investment strategy and stick with it. It's the strategy that I learned from one of the best investors in the world. I learned it when I was young and I've been using it my whole life. And it's really paid off. It's simple index fund investing. Buy it, then don't ever touch it again. It's the whole set it and forget it that some of you may remember from infomercials. The investor that I learned my simple secrets for investing from is none other than Warren Buffett. In 2007, he issued a challenge to hedge fund investors. The bet was, could they achieve better returns than the S&P 500 over the next 10 years? You see, he believes that almost no one, no matter how skilled, has the ability to beat the S&P 500 index, which is essentially the US stock market, over the long term. He thought he'd have several takers for this bet, but he only had one, and the hedge fund that took it bet him $1 million. What were the results of this bet? Not even close. Over the next 10 years, the hedge fund did about 2% a year. The S&P 500, more than 7%. That should teach you something. Let's also look at how Warren has decided to invest for his family. Now he's already 89 years old. He has a plan for how his money's gonna be invested for his family once he's gone. Is he letting his company, Berkshire Hathaway, manage it? No, he's directed that his family money be placed in 90% S&P 500 index and 10% bonds. That's profound. We all should take a lesson from him. Simple index fund investing that is not touched over the long term, most of the time will yield superior results to any other type of investing. The market has averaged more than 7% over the last 90 years. It's the best strategy that I'm aware of, and it's also the one the best investor in the world uses. Convinced? If you want to invest, like Warren Buffett up there, all you need to do is invest in the TSP's C fund. That mimics the S&P 500 index. If you wanted to do exactly what he was doing with his family, it'd be 90% C fund and 10% G fund. G fund is the bond market. Now there are many different ways to index fund invest. I wrote a post on it, my most popular post so far on my blog. Number two, and this one's important, don't time the market. Now this is easier said than done, and there are two distinct types of timing in the market that I want to warn you about. One of them is don't panic and sell when the market starts dropping. And number two, don't keep changing strategies over the short term. Don't make short-term trades in your account. Now just like the first strategy, doing this can more than double what your TSP has in the end. It's a must. I said earlier, don't sell when the market drops. Another version of the same story is, don't sell everything just because you think things are about to dive. And I'll give a great example of that. The reason you don't try to time the market by selling when the market drops is you have to be right two times. You have to be right that you sell before the market goes down a lot more. You also have to be right in knowing when to buy back in before it starts to climb back up again. Sometimes there are fake drops. And when you sell, it shoots relentlessly back up, and then you've lost a lot of money. Sometimes you buy back in at a lower price after selling, but then it just keeps dropping, tempting you to sell again. But I know, you think you might be that rare person who sells just at the right time, buys at the bottom, rides it back up, and then rides off into the sunset on a horse. I've got news for you. In reality, this is very, hard to do. Statistically speaking, you are far better off letting your money ride. Don't touch it when things get volatile. Don't try to guess what the market's going to do. And don't pay attention to all the craziness you're going to see in the media, on TV, on blogs, and from your friends around the water cooler. The best thing to do when the market drops 
is know you're investing for the long term. Wait for it to come back up in the future and don't sell in a panic. That's how you keep your money. Let's talk about Trump. It's a popular subject, right? Now just know I'm not making a political statement here. I'm actually not very political. There's a lot of people who sold their investments when Trump was elected. They were sure that the markets were gonna crash. Did that happen? No, it did not. I'm showing a graphic right now that actually shows that it went up 40% since he was elected. But this graphic was made back in March. By now, it's actually went up more than 50%, now being January of 2020. The market has went up more than 50% since President Trump was elected. Yet many people, certainly many I know, sold all their investments into cash because they wanted to avoid the drop in the market that they were sure was gonna happen. Instead, they missed a massive rally over the last several years. That's gonna hurt them in retirement. Don't let it happen to you. The first part of not timing the market I just talked about was don't sell before a big drop. The next part is don't try to beat the market by making short-term trades. You don't wanna be buying and selling based on the info that people are giving you, your hunches, or whatever you're reading in the damn paper. Does anyone even read the paper anymore? There is a multi-billion dollar industry out there. Its goal is to make you believe that you can do better in the stock market by listening to what they're trying to sell you. Sell now. Buy this hot stock before it takes off. Here's what so-and-so is buying. The entire multi-billion dollar industry I'm talking about is useless. It's bullshit. Look, nobody knows the future. No company or person knows what's gonna happen tomorrow, next week, or next month. Following this crap is a recipe for losing money. Listening to their cable shows, signing up for their newsletters, paying someone to manage your money, listening to Jim Cramer for stock tips, it's all a waste of time. Money managers are gonna be pissed at me for saying this. Oh wait, no one watches these videos anyway. Do you think that day trading is a good investment strategy? If you do, I can't help you because it's not. But if you're trying to trade on a daily, weekly, monthly, hell, even yearly basis, you're gonna run into the same problem. Price moves aren't predictable over these short periods of time. And yes, a year is a short period of time for the market. Now I can tell you what's predictable over the long term. If you wait 20 or 30 years, you're gonna have solid growth, probably at least 7% on average in your accounts. Set it and forget it. Have a simple investing strategy for your index funds. Buy it and let it ride. Don't mess with it. Now, I used to be a stockbroker with Fidelity Investments. It's a good company. They got lots of money. They also have a ton of data on lots of rich people going back decades. They decided to do some research and find the traits of their investors that make the most money in their accounts. Their results were very surprising. The accounts that had the most growth over the long term fell into two distinct categories. Number one, accounts of people that had died but still not closed their accounts. Number two, accounts of people that had forgotten they had accounts at Fidelity. The moral of the story is that people that didn't touch their accounts over long periods of time had the best returns. That's because we as humans try to guess about which direction things will go in. Unfortunately, we tend to get it wrong more than we get it right. There are websites, companies, Facebook groups, newsletters that claim to have the best strategies for your TSP allocation. They'll tell you how much to put in, when to change, when to sell, when to buy. They seem to be aware of what's gonna happen in the future but they're not. Even more egregious than this, lots of these services are charging you for this. They're charging you to make less money than you would if you'd left your account alone in a simple index fund. Make sure that computes for you. Look, if you feel like supporting them, go ahead. I'm sure it's hell not gonna do it. So many of you are already invested in the TSP. I'm curious, how do you invest? Do you have a preference between the C fund, which mimics the S&P 500 index, and the S fund, which is several thousand mid cap companies? Now me personally, I'm 50% C and 50% S in my TSP. What is your preference between C and S, or what is your split and why?
Leave that in the comments. Actually hit pause right now, like hit pause and type out this answer in the comments. And now for strategy number three. This one is ultra important for building wealth. Contribute the max from early in your career. I know this is hard, so let's talk about this. First, let me admit that I made a big mistake with my own TSP. I didn't live by this rule. I've been investing since 2002, and I didn't start maxing the TSP until 2011. Big mistake. I've done the math. If I would have been maxing since day one, I would have had far more than double what's in my account now. This is because of the power of compound interest. Again, consider that the market has grown 50% since Trump came into office. How much money was in your account in 2016? If you had a lot of money contributed before 2016, you saw all of that 50% growth. This is the importance of compound interest over the long term. The money that you contribute earlier in your career is far, far more important than what you contribute the second half of your career. Now this is ironic. It's at the beginning of our careers that we feel like we can't afford to contribute the max, but I'll tell you that's when it's most important. Look, I know this task seems impossible, so I'm gonna suggest a few things. You sacrifice and you find a way to make it happen. One thing you can do is side hustles. That means making extra money, get a side job. I flipped houses while I was on active duty to make extra income. Live frugally. Cut back on your two biggest expenses, housing and cars. Get rid of your debt. Living frugally now and investing the max could mean that you retire 10 or even 20 years earlier than you would have otherwise. Think about that. Now, I'm not just talking about this stuff. It's what I did. I'm a few months away from retirement and I pretty much live my life like I'm describing right now and I'm in a position where I don't have to work again. It's very attainable. If you can't start maxing today, put in a lot more and set a goal to max it soon. So in review, Pick the right strategy and stick with it. Don't time the market. Make sure you contribute the max as early as you can in your career. And you'll be rich. Watch my video about TSP allocations. You have several choices. Just click that little thing in the upper right corner. CRS or a combination. How are you investing in the TSP? Leave a comment. This is Rich on Money. Hope you liked today's video. Signing off.